Hello, my name is Rob Edwards. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we are talking alternate history, or specifically the history of alternate history as it relates uh, to the indie press, uh, Inklings Press. And I'm joined on this voyage of discovery uh, with fellow Inklings author and good friend of mine, Brent A. Harris. Say hello, Brent. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Wonderful to have you here. Uh, now, I've already had a video on this channel a long time ago talking to uh, one of our other Inklings pals, Stephen, uh, also known as Leo, uh, depending on whether you're talking about his real name or his writing name. And he's talked a bit about uh, the origins of Inklings Press. Uh, there's a card in the video up there, I think. Uh, but just in case uh, the people haven't watched that, do you want to share briefly your perspective on how Inklings Press came to exist? Inklings Press is made up of uh, myself, Rob, Ricardo, and uh, uh, Leo or Stephen, depending on his current mood of the day. And uh, we're, we were a bunch of Loughborough gamers uh, in the UK, and it kind of spiraled from there because uh, we all had the same passion for writing, and we just kind of kept in touch and uh, kept in contact with each other's writing and see how it went, and then we ended up um forming uh the inklings press because of it uh, as a way to kind of uh, as a support network I, I believe at first and uh yes. there we are yeah, yeah. T 10 books later or will be 10 books later uh, still mm -hmm. going strong marvelous stuff um i think it's probably safe to say that um we've had we've i mean all of the books we put out i'm very proud of every single one of them. i think we've done great work on all of them if i do say so ourselves uh, but our real sort of breakout hit uh, was probably uh, the first of the Inklings Press alternate history books, uh, which would be uh, this book here, Tales from Alternate Earths. Uh, so you are our, you are our go-to guy for alternate history in Inklings Press. Uh, what made you want to put an alternate history anthology uh, out from our uh, little uh, concern? Well, yeah, a lot of this is my fault. Uh, I'll take the blame. Um, sadly, I can't. I can't pass the blame around. Um, uh, even though it is probably, we'll find ways to make it your fault too, Rob. Um, <laughs> yes, the most successful thing Inklings Press has done is all your fault. I see. I see. No, you no, no. Oh, I listen to you here. I wouldn't say it's the most successful, but it uh, has definitely been very rewarding. It's been a great experience, and um, uh, I, I love I, my passion is alternate history, and so from the beginning of uh, us doing these anthologies, I've been kind of pushing for an alternate um, uh, alternative take on on the past to try to you know, bring my passions uh to to uh Inklings press and i was very fortunate that uh you guys kind of let me do it and then i could it's not a uh, one-man show by all means it takes all of us to kind of really get in there and get it done so the fault is really everybody's that's, and, that's and, excellent to hear yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh why alter history what's what's your fascination with where did that start from well, I've always loved history, and I think um, anybody who's who's read a history book and wondered what if something happened just a little bit differently, because as it is, history happens um, on these choices that we all make, and it's totally uh, viable to, to say, to suggest that somebody might have made us a, a different choice, and then what would have happened if they had made a second, uh, that, that other choice? What if circumstances were different? It is it is a fascinating topic. It's actually I I find it extremely hard to write. Um, I mean, not to say that I haven't put a story in each of the Hilda uh, Earth's uh, books, but uh, it's been it's been like drawing blood from a stone for me for all three of them. Does it come naturally to you? Is it something that you just sort of default to? That's a really bad way of saying it. But is yeah. that something that you you know that, that really is your first is your first thought? Well, it is difficult. Uh, it's incredibly challenging because it's not just um, um, coming up with an idea of, oh, what if this happened? It's creating a whole new world as a result of that, but still making sure you have a story and characters that are believable and real 
in that world. So, yeah, it's it's exceptionally challenging to write. It's not like historical fiction where you're recreating the past um, and you still have to do that research. But then it's also like fantasy and science fiction where you're world building as well. And you're still keeping the core elements of storytelling in place as well. So, no, it's not... It's not easy by any means. Um, I I find it a little bit more possibly natural just because my youth uh, was informed by like Marvel's What If comics, DC Elseworlds, um, uh, Harry Turtle Dove, S. M. Sterling, uh, 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 War More, a lot of these uh, uh, Philip K. Dick, a lot of these alternate history sci-fi. Uh, parallel worlds uh, type authors and stories that I read. So I've, I've had a lot of the background, and um, I guess it's the only reason that I, I, I kind of pushed everybody else to do it too. I think it's quite fascinating, the, the, the fact that alternate history, in many ways, is it's, it's definitely its own sort of subgenre, but it, it does cross over a lot as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, that you can have an alternate history story where aliens invade. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, well, I think is it Turtle Dove has got a, a, a really famous series. You know more about this than I do, I'm sure. Uh, alternate history story in which aliens have invaded. I understand it. Absolutely, yes, and and it can cross genres. You can have alternate fantasy. You can have alternate uh, with, uh, say, what if um, uh, uh, you know there was magic in the Americas or or something like that. You know, uh, or or what if magic were real. I mean, it transcends so many um, genres, and yet it's its own it's its own genre in its own right. Mm, fascinating stuff. Um, let's let's talk alternate Earths one though, uh, and specifically, uh, let's have a quick chat about our stories in there. Uh, my st- I'll, I'll start with me because there's more to say about yours. Um, I'll start with me. Uh, my story, uh, stargazing on Oxford Street. Um, it was a it was a weird journey to get to for me. Um, it started from the principle of when um, Tunguska happened. We actually had a, Alternate Earths 1 had a lot of meteor strikes, um, or a couple mm-hmm. anyway. Uh, and uh, But the idea, my what if in that story was what if, um, in fact, it struck a, a more populated area than sort of the remote Russian forests. And I had it strike London during the uh, the is it 1912? I suppose it was since I read it. 1912 Olympics, I think something like that. Yeah, something. Um, uh, so, and my story is set up about a little time after that. As someone being quite trying trying to process all the death and destruction that came out. It's, it's supposedly a, quite a personal story um, about dealing with with a, a, a incomprehensible tragedy essentially, uh, and what happens. Uh, to the world once uh, the UK is taken out of the sort of power struggle that was going on in the earlier 20th century. And I didn't spend a great deal of time on the sort of details of that, but I I hope I dropped, um, as you were talking about earlier, Brent, the the sort of world building, the hints of what happened there. Um, Whereas your story in Alternate Earths 1, how did that, tell tell us a bit about it, how did that come to be? Because it's a Collaboration between yourselves and uh, and Ricardo, right? Oh yeah. Well, uh, first I have to say I think your story is brilliant. It does everything that an alternate history story should do. It does take a massive uh, event and moves the location, which I mean uh, a lot of uh, 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 people have done. Harry Harrison has moved a me- the meteorite that hit the dinosaurs uh, over to a. To, anyways, okay, I can go on for hours, but I also like the the fact that it was a personal story. It was yeah. really a personal journey, and I think that matters quite a bit. Um, you know, uh, it's not just about what the event is; it's how people perceive themselves and the event. It's what you were saying. It's you. you I mean, whatever you do about the world building, it's still got to be a story. It's still got to be a story about a person mm-hmm. going yeah. through a thing happening in that yeah. world. Uh, yeah. So yeah. And, and, and that actually kind of segues into um, Twilight of the Mesozoic Moon, which is my story from a, uh, uh, well, my, when I say my story, Ricardo and I kind of collaborated on that. Um, he had come up with this wonderful vignette of, uh, of a velociraptor standing on a moon, and I absolutely loved it, but um, uh, we both kind of looked at it and said, well, this is a great idea, but 
again, there's no character, there's no story. So what we did is we went back and we said, okay, how do we tell a story in this world where velociraptors can go to the moon? So we ended up with, um, you know, not necessarily velociraptors because it wouldn't have happened like that, mm. but we ended up with, you know, um, um, astronaut dinosaurs uh, that do a little bit of time tra- traveling. You know, it's absurd. I, it seems absurd, but I mean, there it is. I loved the the sort of details you worked in about the setup of of how their spaceship works uh, and the way that the control consoles are configured for their biology and, and um, physiology yeah. rather than human ones. And uh, it was just fascinating to me. I think it was one of the one of the one of the most interesting bits of uh, writing in alternate Earths. I think. Uh, how did you come up with all that? You're a bit of a dinosaur boffin, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I in a another world, I may have been a paleontologist, uh, but uh, in this world, I just write about dinosaurs, and I'm still fascinated about it. In fact, uh, my family and I just went up to Gubbio, Italy, uh, the last uh, week, and we saw the uh, KT. When I grew up, it was called the KT boundary, uh, KPG boundary that you can see in the rock formations uh, in in Gubbio. So it's it's a thrill. I definitely have to say I, I do like writing about dinosaurs, probably to Rob's dismay. <laughs> not my not my dismay, but uh, but yeah. uh, they, I, I, yeah, I've made jokes about it before. So yeah, yes. <laughs> write about something different. Come on. <laughs> um, and I mean it's a brilliant story. Everybody should read it. Um, it is it is brilliantly done. I do, I have to say it's it's one of my favorite things that you guys have. Uh, put out between you or, or individually. Uh, I think it's a really well done story. Um, and you don't even have to read it. You did a you did a recording of it. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. true. It is on it is on my it is on my podcast as well. If you can find yeah. it. Um, but it, it actually got a bit of attention. Uh, one of two stories within Alternate Earths uh, to get nominated for a Sidewise Award. How did that feel? Oh, it was pretty awesome. I I felt very in. I felt in. Imposter syndrome kicking in for sure. Uh, I was in lofty company, and uh, I was just, I mean, it was just an absolute thrill. Uh, and, uh, you know, I still, uh, whenever I'm having a, a down day, I still kind of go back and say, hey, look, you know, you have had good days too. And definitely one of the better days. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's move on from alternate earths. I, I think there's a lot of brilliant stories in there. I, um, apart from. Hour two, have you got any favorites in Alternate Earths one? Oh, I, I found a little bit in each story that I really uh, really love. And shout out to Daniel Vincent for winning the Sidewise Award. Oh, yes, in... that... yes. <laughs> I almost missed that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He, he was nominated and won. Yes, uh, absolutely. So uh, A1 is uh, quite definitively an award winning anthology, which is quite exciting. Yay! Um, before we talk about A2, uh, let's have a very brief talk about uh, your novel. Uh, well, one of your novels. You've produced, you've produced several now. Uh, but A Time of Need uh, was your debut novel, and it was an alternate history one. So, again, sort of no dinosaurs, though, I think. No, not yet. Not yet. I don't have George Washington writing a, uh, a dinosaur quite yet. Do you want to share a bit more about what A Time of Need is about? Uh, it, it's really... Um... It was kind of sort of a cheat because I was going through uh, college at the time, uh, learning uh, uh, about American the American history, American Revolution, and such like that. And um, I ultimately uh, uh, wrote quite a bit of nonfiction uh, academic papers about the American Revolution. So it just kind of fell into um, the, the fiction side of it, and I ended up writing about what if George Washington had decided to side with the British right. in uh, the American Revolution? Hence, and hence the red coat on the cover, yes. The red coat on the cover, yeah, exactly. It's supposed to be uh, an amazing art by Ian Bristow. It's supposed to just kind of take you by the shoulders and go, wait a minute. Um, that's not right. <laughs> that's not right. Um, uh, it, was, it was your first novel. Uh, any, any lessons learned from it, do you think? Well, I was also very fortunate in that um, people seemed to really enjoy it. It also garnered a Sidewise Award nomination. Oh, yes. Double double nominated Brendan Harris. I know. Yes. I know. 
Um, so people people will seem to like it. Um, there's still more uh, story to, in that world to tell. Uh, that will eventually be out there. I just I keep getting bogged down by not bogged. Bogged is the wrong word. I keep it's getting tired. I track, yes, my, my other stories and, and, and books, but yeah. So for time of need, I think I'm right in saying you actually went to the convention where the, the award was handed out. I was. I you got to sit on a stage be, with some, some pretty big names, I think, right? Uh, again, imposter syndrome is in full <laughs> swing there as well, but, you know, fake it until you make it. I'm just sitting up there at the table with, you know, some very well-known um, uh, authors in the field, giants in the field, and I'm just sitting there uh, doing what I, I'm doing. And uh, uh, I, we all had a great, great time. It was fun. Well, let's hope we can get you back onto one of those tables in some time in the future again. Um, let us turn our attention now to the second of uh, our alternate history books for Inklings Press. And uh, I think, I mean, just briefly sort of dipping into how the sausage is made, uh, this, I think, was, I think, of all of our books, of all 10 books that we've released or about to release uh, from Inklings Press, I think this one was possibly the biggest struggle to get out there. I think the end product is great. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's some really fantastic stories uh, in there. But, mm -hmm. oh, man, it was it was some hard work getting this one out there. Um, <laughs> Let's kick off with you this time. Tell us about your story in, in Alternate Earth 2. Well, I think my, um, you know, I, I, I like the story I wrote for E2, but I also feel like I may have gone a little bit topical, which is not necessarily something you want to do for alternate history. Mm. Um, and it's not something that I think I wouldn't necessarily repeat. And it's not something I don't think I even consciously intended at the time. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of just what happens. There are a lot of, like you said, there are a lot of global events going on at that time. A lot of things that were kind of, you know, even affecting our ability to get stuff out. Not like a global pandemic or anything. No, no, but that, that came later. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah no, no, that's uh, AE3. We got that. Yes, that's true. Uh, um, my story, what was my story? Oh, my story was Emperor of the North, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that's yes. Yes, oh, and I think that was a little bit topical too. What if I? There was a bit of there was a bit of global warming in there. There was a mm -hmm. bit of uh, a bit of, uh, uh, well, for me anyway. I I quite recently moved to Finland, so I was writing. Mm, so stories, yeah, really, yeah. I was writing a story set in Finland in, amongst the ice and the cold of a of a long, of a long winter in in uh, mm -hmm. because of uh, climate change. Um, it was I, it was a, it was a really interesting book. I liked. Uh, a two, uh, another book I, I got to share with my dad. I don't know if uh, I don't know if anyone who follows <laughs> Inklings Press knows, uh, but uh, I occasionally badger my dad into writing for us as well. Uh, he had a story in in Alternate Earths two uh, about the Matthew, the ship that uh, um, I forget what it was about now, but it was about it was about the Matthew. Yes, one of uh, uh, I believe that was uh, it was uh, somebody else discovering uh, yes, the yes, that's right. It was that's right. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, so um, we'll, we'll move on from Alternate Earth 2 because I'm not sure we've got very much, and well, unless you have something more to say about it as a book. Well, just, it was challenging. You were moving to Finland. I think I was moving to Italy. We had a couple of hurricanes that kind of really affected our editor. Um, you know, I think there was an earthquake in Mexico. I mean, it was like the world. But... It was very much a cursed production. Uh, I'm, no. super pr I'm super proud of what we gave to at the end. But, oh, man, it was hard work. Um, but let us bring ourselves right up to date. At the time of recording this, it's still two weeks from release. Yeah. Uh, Tales from Alternate Earths, Volume 3. Yeah. Um, this one, I, this one I, again, I think it's, a, it's certainly been a lot easier than the production for AE2. Uh, and I think it is, I mean, certainly from a sort of, um, a profile level of the authors in the book, let's put it, let's put it that way, uh, we've probably got the biggest names we've ever had uh, in this book. We have uh, huge, huge names, yes. Not only do we have uh, two sidewise 
uh, nominees of our own. Well, actually, oh, you were meaning me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, three actually. I suppose you and Ricardo shared the nomination, so uh, we've actually yeah. got three sideways nominees, nominations from Inklings Press history. Uh, but share with us who you've managed to who you managed to bag for. Yeah, four. Time. We have four. Alan Schnell is also sideways yes, award. Yes, of course. A winner. Is. A winner. He he won for the short story class of Eagles, and I think he won also for. The, the trilogy once it were released in in a larger format. You know, take your short story and make it into a, a best selling trilogy. I mean, why not? Yeah, I, yeah. If you manage it, nice work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well done. Yeah, and of course, Daniel Benson is returning. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and he's. Uh, I, I, I I just love the tagline. Uh, I just love the tagline for for that. Uh, in terms of um, when we were writing the back blurb for, for AE3, uh, the idea in Daniel's story is basically what if this invent this is Bul Bulgarian, isn't it? Yeah, what if the Bulgarian inventor uh, had oh, shoes yeah. with him? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, which is uh, just as a, as a, as a branch point for our for our what if for that story, I think it's just brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Yeah, he's he's known for getting into the weeds and really creating intricate worlds uh, uh, off of these, you know, very small turning points in history. So it, it's a fun story. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then, yeah, we have we have so many big names. We have, um, I, we haven't touched the, the surface of all the cool stuff we have in there. Uh, and um, I suppose the other big name that people might recognize outside of the inkling, the traditional ink, inklings group, uh, is DJ Butler? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was just coming young. Yeah, please tell us. Yeah. Tell, tell oh, us. No, 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 no! Uh, you're the expert. Please. What do you oh, no, going to say about DJ Butler? He, he's a great guy. Uh, I've met him. I've had the honor and privilege of meeting uh, meeting him. He's actually helped out with uh, one of my uh, books as well. Um, and he's uh, he's I believe won the Dragon Award for alternate uh, history. With this Flintlock fantasy, which I think we were—I was hinting at earlier about sort of like magic in the Americas. Right. Uh, he's the uh, the uh, the brainchild behind the Witchy Eye series that you can get from uh, Bang Books. Okay, I do, I I I just I do keep me because you've talked about to me rather than the video. You talked to me about this sort of Flintlock fantasy kind of idea that. Uh, uh, I find quite fascinating. It sounds like it would be right up my street. I really must check it out one of these times. But his, sto his stories, are, his story is a really interesting one as well. Uh, in in AE three, I think it's uh, uh, it's sort of deep in Cold War espionage lore. Uh, yes, it's, it's quite a um, it's quite a, clearly a well studied and well researched look at that kind of era and that kind of that kind of interaction. I think fans of DJ Butler will get my joke here, but he is a man of many hats. <laughs> I don't get that joke, but I'm going to laugh anyway. Marvelous. Um, so we've got we've got a lot of stuff. So it's uh, my story in there. Uh, what's my story? Oh, my story in there is Ops and Ostentation. It is um, yes, it, oh, is, really? it is a Jane Austen pastiche uh, mm -hmm. with. Um, uh, with, with, again, talking about aliens invading during a, during an alternate history, uh, mm -hmm. something uncanny has attacked London during Regency England, uh, and but it is it's told very much in a sort of Pride and Prejudice story uh, style, and ah, uh, of all the, of all the alternate histories I have written, this one was a positive joy to write. I had so much yeah. fun with it. I mean, hopefully the the end result is good, but from a writing perspective. Uh, it was a real giggle to write this one. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Well, I can assure you that the end result is going to be massively entertaining uh, <laughs> for everybody to read. And it's a great story. It, it, it's I, I kind of jealous that I didn't think of something like that. <laughs> and uh, I'm very honored to, to have that in the book. And I also want to make sure we give you a shout out because A3 is your, you were the project manager on this guy. Wow. And uh, it was a lot of work on your end, coordinating and doing all the background stuff and the stuff that people don't see. Um, that was all you, and you coordinated that expertly, oh, and you. Uh, you did really well. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, let's move on from that because there's imposter syndrome going around today. It seems. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, your story. Oh, we're back with dinosaurs for your story, aren't right. we? What? Um, what are we all? <laughs> tell us. Tell us. What can people expect from uh, um, Dust of the Earth? Wasn't it called? I think. Yes. Yes. Well, I think, and I think this is worth. Uh, uh, I want you to interrupt and 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 say. But I think going into eighty three, we were really looking for less war stories, less mm -hmm. um, guns and bombs, and we're looking for more. Um, varied ways of approaching alternate history because there are i mean there's a lot of it but a lot of us get bogged down into the the war there's a lot aspect. of world war ii alternate history one way or another mm. and sure. I think we've got yeah. one story one story this time around that sort of touches on that era i think yeah uh, yeah but we've managed to we've managed to dodge it for the 13 other stories yeah i mean it's fine to have you know that and that in there and it's a great story um but i yeah i think we were going into that was our sort of mission statement is what else can we do that is uh, alternate history uh and i i think we have a, a, one of my uh my favorites uh well they're all good but i Everything just hate that things is uh like hits titanic you know because that's perfectly what we embodied and what we were looking for in terms of um our mission statement it's a very different story hitchcock's titanic yeah. uh matthew kressel wrote that uh, mm -hmm. But it's a, oh, I love it. It's it's such a fact. It's basically um, a kind of magazine piece looking at the production of the movie Titanic by Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, um, and it's uh, it's it's absolutely fascinating. I, it's it's one of my favourites, and I mean, again, yeah. they are all favourites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I do like that story. Yeah. Um, but yes, you've managed to deflect away from your own story. I did. I, think, I, think, I, I don't love think I didn't part. notice. Well, but along the same vein as that story, mine basically sees a world where Michael Crichton, for whatever reason, uh, I don't actually give a reason, uh, does not write the book Jurassic Park. And whereas that may not be a world-changing event, or maybe it is, um, it does matter to... A great many people who have been informed by that book, uh, who grown up with the movies and and uh, have their lives changed. Maybe they became, decided to become a paleontologist because of that book. Mm. Um, so I mean, it's it's a, it's a smaller story. It's a simple story, but it's a story I wanted to tell. And I'm I, very happy. I think it's another sort of excellent example of how alternate history doesn't have to be uh, the march of generals and you know. Um, huge civilization ending events and stuff like that it can be a very personal individual story uh, which shows how history affects everybody not just the sort of big luminaries uh, within, mm -hmm. the, within the broad strokes of history uh, so i think i think it's a fascinating little story uh, and a little story <laughs> it's a fascinating story uh, not just a little story um <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. I think we're probably about running out of time here. Is there anything else you want to tell people about Alternate Earth 3 uh, in this run-up? Um, it launches on September the 3rd. We, I, will tell you, I will tell people that in paperback and Kindle format, I think. Uh, but anything else you want to share? Anything that you're particularly looking forward to sharing with people about Alternate Earth 3? I just hope it um, inspires other people to go off and, and either read something further that they caught their interest or you know write their own alternate story because i think everybody has a story to tell and i think that uh, people need to get out there and, and and tell it um so yeah fantastic okay uh, well thanks everybody for joining us thank you brent for joining me today uh and uh if you're interested in my story uh, ops and ostentation there is going to be a reading of it on my podcast uh, due out just before the launch of the book my podcast storycastrob.co.uk or storycastrob on spotify or itunes the usual places you can find such things uh, that should be due, that's due out next week i think so just before the launch on september 3rd um, in the meantime thank you everyone very much for joining me everybody and i will catch you next time cheers <laughs>